All right. Our first guest up tonight, he's an author. Let's give a late night welcome for Andy Mealy. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Andy, how are you, buddy? Thank you for Hi, coming. Andy. Give yourself a clip over there. Yeah, just give it a clip right over here. Gabrielle, give him a hand. Yeah, how are you doing, all right? Good, good. You know, I, I got to say, I want to thank you for having me here and for the times in the past when my books came out. This is your third appearance. This is great. Yes, but I got to tell you something. I've been watching you, and, and you're maturing very nicely as a late-night host. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. But one thing you got to do, you got to have... Uh, you got to be able to, you know, have a, you know, be informed about a lot of subjects. Yes. Uh, Joe Franklin was here. He was great. He, he said you look like, yeah, he was. He said you look like uh, Tyrone Power. Uh, you don't know who Tyrone no, Power is. No, I didn't. Okay. He was a popular act in the 40s and 50s. Very good-looking guy. I don't see the resemblance, but <laughs> just to make sure, I brought you oh, one of his cool. classic oh. movies. Look at this. Blood and Sand. Thank you so much, buddy. So you watch that. it, and uh, you know. I looked him up a couple of days later. I looked what he looked like. And if his if his name ever comes up again, <laughs> yeah, look, yeah, you remember you'll he know. was from back in the day. Those old timers I know, Humphrey Bogart, yeah. James Cagney. Well, that was the day, forties, yeah. forties and fifties. Now, before we get on uh, to the uh, interview, I'd like to congratulate you again. And I love the book Images of, of America. Thank it's you. It's a great read. Yeah. I still look at it. Yeah, yeah, the Italian book. Yeah, you look at the page that you're on. Yeah, well, that too. But there's a lot of great <laughs> there's a lot of great Staten Islanders in there. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was good. A lot of fun. Now listen, there's a lot of controversy going on at the Staten Island Mall these days. What's this Christmas project that you're involved with these days? Okay, what happened was a, a few years ago when the, the new uh, people took over the mall, they're a Jersey-operated company. They've got about 200 malls around the country. And the first thing they did when they came here was to pull out the statue of the Nativity. And uh, when I, you know, I remember it and all that, but it kind of, it bugged me a little bit because I, I got to tell you the thing that, that bothers me it's not so much the religion, it's the idea that they take our money. Tell me about they it. They want our money, but they, they don't want to recognize it. Mm -hmm. I then found out that a number of the stores in the mall had help, Christmas help, and they are forbidden to say Merry Christmas. I know, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So it's, it's a terrible thing. So I just got a little annoyed about it, and I started you know, talking to people. I wrote an article that the, in the advance, mm -hmm. and uh, one thing led to another. And we built a kind of a coalition. We call ourselves Christ is Christmas. And we have the Catholic churches, the Protestant Council of Churches, the Church of the Gateway, uh, a number of fraternal groups like the All the Knights of Columbus on Staten Island, mm -hmm. the Hibernians, which are the Irish. And they're all, all uh, got together. So the first plan was to put together a little bit of a petition. Now, I was just hoping for a few hundred names because I figured then I'd show them that there were people that were interested in this. Uh, we only, we went to, we used two churches. Uh, we used the Church of the Gateway, two Catholic churches, mm -hmm. and then the various people went out. We wound up with 4,000 names, which was very good. Uh, people were calling up, you know, the, uh, a couple of weeks ago, the Advance ran an article on page one, all about the, the whole business. Mm -hmm. We got at New York One after that. We were interviewed a couple of times on New York One, and people saw it and heard it. And they, I was getting emails, you know, where can I sign a petition, this and that and that and this. Uh, but uh, the, the, the thing I say, come back to that again, the money, uh, and that, that, again, still irks me. I know. But I, I, I checked with the uh, National Retail Federation in Washington to see how much is spent on Christmas, right, every year. And they anticipate this year being a neighborhood of just a little bit under $700 billion. That's ridiculous. Wow. $700 billion. Yeah. And the, the aim seems to be... Uh, they want to, they've been doing this slowly over the years. It's not just these people, a lot of others around the country. They seem, they want to push Christ out of Christmas, the religion out of Christmas, but they don't want the money, they don't want to lose the money. So they do it gradually and kind of quietly and, and this and that. But uh, when they first took it out, anyway, we had this meeting a week ago with uh, the uh, uh, general manager at the mall. And... Uh, he, uh, you know, told me what happened in the past, and it was the, from Chicago, blah, 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 and they rolled against it and all that. But the ultimate is that uh, he's agreed to put uh, a nativity in the center court in front of the Christmas tree at well, the that's mall. that's where it should be. Yes, it should. Absolutely should. And, uh, again, when you talk to these people, but the stores, and we haven't finished yet, 
And I, when I went back and told the people, I said, well, I guess we did what we wanted. And they said, no, 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 let's go after this, let's go uh -huh. after that. So I get, they were all worked up now. We got we to, you know, they, they're all, you know, they want to do this, they want to do that. So we're going to be checking on other stores and, and other places. We're going to uh, see if we can do something about the DOT at the ferry terminal. Uh, we've contacted a number of politicians. This is the other thing. I, every politician, I sent an email to every politician from the governor on down connected with Staten Island. Mm -hmm. And we got two two uh, pieces of support. Really? Yes. State Senator Lanza. He's great. And Assemblyman Ignacio. Right. They're the only two that said, we're with you, we'll do what we can, blah, 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 blah. So, but anyway, we're going to keep up with it. We're, Listen, we're not going to stop. This is what it is. I mean, Jesus it's, Christ, he died on the cross. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, every nationality and race, they have their own way of you know, celebrating Christmas, well, but the problem is they're bringing everybody and everybody here. It, so it has, it's like, you it, know, That's the point. It has market. nothing to do with anybody else. That, one of the things they would say at the stores, they said to me, well, my boss does, he says uh, he doesn't want to offend anybody. I said, well, you're offending me. Exactly. You know, you're offending us. It's Christmas. I said, that's a good thing on Labor Day. You know, if I told you to put up a statue of Christ on Labor Day, you'd say, well, what about other religions? That's true. Mm -hmm. But here you have Christmas, you have Hanukkah. Yes. And they do uh, uh, put something for Kwanzaa, but that's not a religious thing. That's a cultural thing. So it's not as, uh, you know, it, they can do whatever they want to do. How, but, how big is the group now? Well, I, I can't give you numbers because we have 4,000 signatures and okay. uh, we have uh, several dozen, you know, really active, the people that we have meetings with and who go around and, uh, and, and you know, do this thing with that. The uh, Catholic churches are going to have it in all their bulletins. Uh, that on Sunday, November 18th, we're declaring it Christ is Christmas Sunday. Uh -huh. We're asking pastors to say it at the pulpit, and it's going to be in the bulletins. And then the following uh, Friday, which is Black Friday, we're going, to have, we're going to meet at the mall. Now, I have to mention the one store of Sears. Sears has had a beautiful statue of the Holy Family yep. every year sitting in there. So our idea was to go meet at Sears and then do our shopping in Sears and then go home. Uh, turn Black Friday red was my, my <laughs> slogan. But uh, in view of what, uh, what's happened now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're still going to meet. The demonstrations still go on. It's going to be kind of a show that Sears, you know, and, and a few other stores that are going to do it. And also thank them all for giving us that, uh, the attention that we think is deserved. But it's, uh, it's, it's a shame. That's a great idea. I'm glad somebody but, is stepping up to the plate, you know. Well, yeah, you have to. There's a lot, a lot of people. But I guess, you know, as individuals, you know, it's hard to, you don't do anything. Mm -hmm. What can you do? Right. I mean, I haven't spent any money in the mall except for Sears. But what good is that? They're not going out of business because of me. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so, so uh, uh, you have to get a lot of people. But once you, you talk about it, once you mention it, I mean, people are, they, because a lot of people feel this way. They're really upset. They're really annoyed. They, oh, I'm glad. I want to sign something. I want to go someplace. I want to do something. Oh, so that's, that's, that's where it went, and it's, it's been, uh, it's been uh, we're very gratifying uh, that, that we got where we went. Well, whatever that's you good. need, let me know. Sign me aboard. Uh, it's almost your time. Any other projects you got in the future before you go? Yeah, well, uh, I'm, I am writing. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, I've written about baseball. Yes. I've written about Italians. Uh -huh. So I put it together, and I'm doing a book on Italians in Major League history. All right, cool. And it, it, I want to mention two records that are in the book, mm -hmm. one by Italians. One, of course, is Joe DiMaggio's fabulous 56-game hitting streak. Mm -hmm. But the other is, I bet you don't know this, there's a guy on the Boston <laughs> Red Sox. There's a catcher on the Boston Red Sox. His name is Jared Saltamacchio. Mm -hmm. He's got the longest surname in the history of baseball. Me. 14 letters. 14 and he's letters. Sicilian. It's a Sicilian name, Joe. Sounds like, Japanese. Like me and you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so well, Andy, is there any place anyone can get in touch with you on the internet? Well, I can give you my uh, email if you want yeah, me to sure. pass it along. It's it's Andy P five five seven at AOL dot com. So if anybody's interested, the more the merrier. We yeah. want to keep people going, keep the whole thing going. It's a great cause. Uh, it is definitely yes. support Christ. But Andy Mealy, come back anytime. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you so much, buddy. Thank Be you. good. Andy's great. That's it. Daytime on late night. He's holding the record. <laughs>